Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shuffle podcast. Now, you may wonder why it's called Life's A Shuffle. And the reason why we came up with this title was that life is really shuffling. And it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, what age you are, you're shuffling multiple things in life. And the best thing to know in life is everybody faces your struggles and everybody faces what you're going through. But there's hope in learning something about that. So when our guests share their journey, the hope is you learn something in that journey so yourself can navigate the struggles you face, the low self-esteem, the self-confidence. And that's why we call podcast Life's a Shuffle. And throughout this podcast, we share our personal overcoming stories, as well as our guests who shares their personal journey in overcoming their personal struggles. Life's a Shuffle podcast is here to connect like-minded individuals. And thank you for listening to Life's a Shuffle podcast. Hi, this is Gloria, your life coach and meditation coach. Welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your mental health coach and soon to be, I used to use the word psychologist, but I'm going to use the word therapist. Um, I did a quick study on identity and therapy. We did some research, so I'll call myself a therapist or soon to become therapist. And welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. And today's episode is going to talk about burnout. I think, um, I know spring's in the air, summer's in the air, but I see a lot of people, not see, but I hear and I see people are just at their wit's end. It can be in a relationship, uh, personal, intimate, it can be your career um, trajectory where you feel burnt down. And today is how to know when you feel burnt out. And, and burnt out is not a specific de- de- destination. It's a specific add up of certain things, right? So say, for example, you want to fill up a 50 pound sack, right? You got to add one pound at a time, right? And that's how burnouts, one thing after another thing, compounding to make it more facing a burnout. And how to know when you are in a burnout phase. Um, I, I'll give a quick example about burnout phase. Burnout phase can come specifically at lack of motivation, uh, unable to get up, not feeling happy anymore, trying to justify why you should feel a certain way, justify you should be happy trying to create more space. I need time off. Um, These are certain things that start adding up. Microaggressions. Microaggressions are um, based upon your your creed or your ethnicity where you face constant aggression at work. Um, So there's elements of just minor burnout. So I'm at that. I'm at, I'm burning out, but I'll talk about that a little more detail personally. What do you think, Gloria? What do you think about burnout and this time of year? You know what? I I think it's just for some reason, it, it seems like everybody faces this, uh, faces burnout in the same time of the year, and it might be this. It might be spring season, right? It might be that, but I would say, um, you know, when when you some they don't recognize that what they're facing, but they know they're feeling something. I'd say, you know, ask yourself some questions. Like, do you feel like you're dragging yourself? Maybe you're dragging yourself to work, dragging yourself to home, just. If you just feel like you're dragging yourself and, you know, you have trouble getting started, you know, getting yourself, uh, getting your day started, ask yourself, do you find it hard to concentrate sometimes? You know, lack of energy. Um, Has your sleeping habits changed? You know, headaches. Sometimes I I know for me, I get headaches sometimes too. Um, Headaches or stomach problems. These are some of the questions that you might want to ask yourself. Um, and if, let's say, you've answered yes to any of those questions, then you most likely are facing a burnout. You know, another phase of burnout, you just hit something. Um, I know mm-hmm. when I'm burned down, when two things happen. When I want, when I crave like junk food, like pizza, burgers, um, alcohol. Like, have you ever noticed most people on weekends want to have like a 
their happy hour or they want to have uh, a with my, my thing is whiskey, but they want to feel better. And it gives them a euphoric feeling. It can be a marijuana. It can be uh, drugs too. That's a phase that you know you're facing that you want to always disconnect from that feeling. That's how you know you're in it. If I'm always eating junk food in the weekend and I find myself drinking whiskey on a Friday, whiskey on a Saturday, or during a week I'm thinking about whiskey, then I know something should change. Now, during a week, I don't drink whiskey. However, on weekends, I may have one. I didn't have one so far this weekend, but that's my facing burnout. Okay. And like some people actually, when, they, when they're facing burnout, they can't keep food down. They feel nauseous. They're getting migraines. You know, they're always kind of seeing on edge, hearts racing, hearts beating. And those are other signs. I mean, the list can go on and on because burnout is individually based. Yeah, it's it's that in that case, when you start experiencing that in your body, that those are, I would say, the consequences of ignoring what you are facing. So if you're facing a, a burnout, let's say at a job and, you know, you ignore that. So you continue to do what you're doing, but yet you're just not feeling it. Then, yeah, you, you will you will experience stress. You know, you'll be fatigued, right? So not being able to sleep, high blood, oh my gosh, high blood pressure. That's, that's the number one for me right now, because my family has a lot of, um, they are, there's a history of high blood in my family, um, my mom's side of the family. And I know, I, I know of a family member who's experienced that over job burnout at a young age. Um, alcohol is one that you said you crave, you, you crave whiskey. I think for me, um, when I start feeling something, I, I always tell myself, like, I want to take a nap. I want to take a nap. I need a nap. I always say that. And then there's certain certain junk foods that I crave for. Yeah, I, I crave a lot of junk food. I, I like to snack. And one for sure is a donut. <laughs> <laughs> I crave. Love those sweets. <laughs> yes. So I crave a lot of sweets. That and then I always, like, my in my mind, I'm always like, thinking I want to take a nap. I don't know why. I think it's more of, I just want to lay down and not do anything and just lounge. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. burnout. Mm-hmm. That's burnout. <clears throat> but remember, there's consequences to all that when you start ignoring it. Oh, yeah. I call it the bells that get louder and louder. You know, burnout is, people think I'm burnt out and it has, they have reached a specific de- destination. That means they have reached maximum tolerance and what they can no longer tolerate. But it wasn't that destination. It was a small thing, unrecognizable, misunderstood um, individually, right? Mm-hmm. We tell ourselves, we just got to keep going. We tell ourselves, it'll get better. We tell ourselves, okay, if I get through this hurdle, I'll be through the next one. We tell ourselves we need more um, space for mental health. It means, you know, meditation, going on vacations. We do all these different things, but yet the problem still remains. What should we do about it? Now, if you can, you create radical changes, right? Because if you're doing the same thing over and over again, it's going to be the same result. However, you can't just quit your career. You can't just say, I'm going to leave my relationship or marriage. You just can't say, I'm not take care of the kids no more. You can't, certain things you just can't not do right then and there. So how would you, after you identify it, Gloria, how would you want to overcome burnout? Um, for me personally, what I normally do, um, knowing what I know now, I would take a step back. I give myself space to be mindful. And be aware of what is really happening. What's happening to my body? What's happening to me? Why am I feeling this way? I evaluate things. Mm. And, you know, and honestly, sometimes I find myself sitting in the backseat of the car. um, And I'm sitting there thinking. And when I'm thinking, I'm evaluating. You know, I'm getting this headache. Why am I having this headache? I have a, a bad feeling in my stomach, and uh, these are just some some things that I do feel when I start to feel the burnout or I start to feel stress. Um, that's when I know that I need a break. I need space for my day to day life. That's right? where it's found in your day to day life. Something mm-hmm. has been compounded in a silo. I call it silo. It's best description in your day to day life. 
it's really ironic. So when people are facing burnout, the first thing they say is, well, I need to meditate. I need to be mind. I need to practice mindfulness. I need to uh, mental health. I need to go on walks and to go to hike. We do all these things. That's what kind of the reason I say those are sort of like, like the norm. However, what if you, that doesn't work for you? Or what if you want something different? See, when I'm facing burnout, it's because I've been going really hard, whatever it is, for four, for four to six weeks. I think I told you before that I need time off. Like I need time to just connect. Because for me, I'm always on. I'm always on, always on, always on the schedule, always on, always on. You know, seven days a week is something I have to do. So I need that product. I need to disconnect. I definitely wake up every morning, practice um, gratitude. I go to be, I go to bed, I go to bed, I go to bed and I say my affirmations, which are, I love myself, I'm satisfied, I'm happy, I'm where I should be, and trust the process. Those are my affirmations. So I do all that. I breathe. I do all that. But something that I really crave is just disconnecting, period. Just unplugging out the wall. And that's the best description. That, that doesn't mean I have to go on vacation. I don't have to. I'm I'm a cool with a staycation because remember my burnout phase is where I'm always on, always on, always got to show up, and now I'm realizing that's what I need. So I need that three to four days off. I need that week off to just recoup myself, second so recharge, right? Mm -hmm. And it's important to when we're when we're going through these phases, we got to recognize exactly what we need. Now, doesn't it mean it's a magical formula. And you're finding the right antidote right in there. No. But you have to do something different or practice something that works well for you. And it takes time to find that. Right? Just, it just really like, does. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. I'm saying it, it does. It's it's not for everybody. It's different for everybody. What 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 is for you is for you and it might not be for somebody else. What's for me is for me. It works out for me. Might not be for everybody else. And that's why, you know, like what you said, you know, just just take a step back. And think what will work for for you. What do you really want for you? It's disconnecting, disconnecting from that. And you know what? That works. It works for me. Sometimes I just, just I get the feeling of just disconnected, disconnecting from the world. I don't want to have to do anything with anybody. I just want to be left alone. That's for me is disconnecting from everybody from the whole world. It's over exaggerated, yes, but sometimes you know. I like to be over exaggerating, makes me feel good. But that's that. And and it could be, like I said, it could just be the whole weekend. And that's why we have, if you work Mondays through Friday, you have that weekend to disconnect and then recharge and you use it. You use those two days that you have to disconnect from everything that you do. Not enough. It might not be enough for everyone, might not be, but it might be just enough for somebody else because remember not everybody faces the same thing every day no um and that's why i said not enough i had to throw that in because two days not enough because well, well, weekend's weekend, well, always short <laughs> well it's, it's not that the weekends you get 48 hours in a weekend let's say and typically i probably get more because i start in my day at 3 p.m on fridays right so i probably get a little more However, my weekends are spent in my my hobby, which I enjoy, which are you know aquariums, and I'm, I'm doing aquarium shooting and, and footage and fish tank stuff on my YouTube channel. But I'm still on. Like I got to take care of these animals and these creatures. I'm still on, and that's why I said a little more. I I, I, re, I, will, I wish that we all can have that four on and three off. I think we talk about that. I need like four days on because Friday I can just <laughs> yeah. veg vegetate. Saturday I do laundry and fish tank stuff and Sunday I rest, right? Because even God rest mm -hmm. on Sunday, let's say. Mm -hmm. But that's that's what we need to do is identify what works best for us and not be overwhelmed by the fact we don't think we control anything. There's something that I, I tell my clients is, um, you know, it's a yes and a no. If you find in your life, you're saying yes to more things than you are saying no, Sometimes we have to reverse it. So if I say yes to a particular thing, I may inversely say no to myself. So say, for instance, you're getting headaches, you're burnt out, but yet you say yes to showing up to happy hour, you say yes to, to hanging out for birthdays on the weekend, you say yes, yes, yes to everything while you're facing burnout. What you're technically doing is you're saying no to yourself. So you have to evaluate how many times I say yes to something, even though I'm facing this phase of burnout. I need to start saying no to that so I can say yes to myself. You can do that in anything. How many times are you saying yes to, to spending money 
and say no to have more money bank account. Well, I need to say no to spending money so I have more money in my bank account, right? You can play it around anything but cause you to face a, a cognitive switch of yes and a no. Now, that is kind of black and white and op- absolute, absolute. However, it may work, right? Trying something new does not mean that it, it doesn't work. Try something new. And that's where you got to play those games with your mind almost. Because we tell ourselves we have to show up, we have to show up, we have to do this, we have to, we have to. And, and how many times a day do we say, I have to or I should or I must? You know, in, in the coaching industry, I do face a lot of minorities, especially African-American or black, where um, there's an idea that I have to be, idea, I'm the only one, right? And I have to be and perform harder than anybody else. And it doesn't matter what minority group you are. I'm just using the idea African-American and black. However, because as I grew up as a kid, I was also told that because you are black, you have to perform harder. Because you're black, you have to work harder. If you're black, you have to do all this stuff. And that also creates a lot of stress. I have to show up better because I'm black. I have to show up and perform better because I'm black. A lot of stress. And it's important to recognize, okay, well, is that really true? Do I have to show up this way? Can I do something different? Because these are systematic and social approaches that we get passed down generations, you know, you know, like say you're, you're Filipino and in the Filipino culture, it's light skin is pretty, right? So you got to make sure you don't stay in the sun, don't get your vitamin D, stay out, do all this stuff, right? Those could be systematic approaches that could also be I should or I have to. And how well is it helping you? Well said. I know I preach to the choir there. I don't know. I know I preach to <laughs> <laughs> And it's Sunday. You're preaching. Amen. Amen. Hey, and, it's Mother's Day too. It's mo- happy Mother's Day, by the way, to oh. all the mothers out there. Happy Mother's Day. And, you know, yeah, thank you for mother's all day. your support. And, you know, being a mother is difficult. I, I'm a, I identify as a male and obviously I don't have kids, but I do have kids, but I don't have kids. Like I don't carry kids and, and being a mother and carrying children is, is a rough job. You know, if you really think about it, a man just needs to ejaculate one time. Inside the woman, the woman gets pregnant, she has to carry around baby for nine months and go through all the changes. So I appreciate all the mothers out there and what they go through. And and even those that maybe adopted a kid or um, maybe um, foster a child, um, you are mothers too because you're giving back to some another human being. And what I noticed a lot of mothers, um, they tend to always give back to their child until they hit their mid-40s when the child's off to college or graduated high school and, and kind of grown. And they're like, what do I do next? But that's a different story. But again, thank you for all the mothers out there. And I appreciate your guys' hard work, dedication, being a career woman and a mother's hard. And uh, and by the way, um, I don't like to be political on podcasts, but that new abortion law, I disagree with that 100%. And that's how I'll leave it. I think autonomy and self-autonomy for your own body should always be the key. I have no idea why the government's getting involved in a person's body. We're in debt. Homeless, social unrest, inequality is more important than what you do with your individual body. That's up to you. But let's go back to burnout. Yeah, burnout. So speaking of mothers, Mother's Day, there's a lot of mothers out there who faces burnout. A lot. And, you know, um, as a mom, I think um, I, I know I do face burnout, but I think through the years I've managed and learned to navigate through that. And like I said, knowing what I know now, I'm able to recognize it. And I think, you know, the first step to, um, to what can you do, right? The first step would be recognizing that you have burnout. That That's usually the first step. And sometimes that first step is the hardest because then you're in denial because then like what you said, this is what I should do. This is what I should be doing. It's all this should, would, right? Could. Or could, yeah. And, and it's if always. If only. Uh, yeah, that too. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> right, what <listen>. else? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody yeah. else is doing it. Well, if they can do it, I can do it. If hey, I can, if, exactly I, if they can one. do, if I can do it, why can't they do it? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's true. So that's the the hardest step is always that first step is recognizing that. And once you recognize that, then you care for yourself, you care for your mental health. This is this really affects your mental health. If the gas the gas tank is empty, 
uh, boy, you're not, you're not, it's not functioning well anymore. You need to refill that gas. And what do you do to refill the tank? I mean, not the gas. What do you do to refill the tank? Yeah. What do you do to refill the tank, mother? So your mom, what do you do to refill your tank? Um, there's, there's a few things that I, I, um, that I do to refill the tank. I, I practice a lot of mindfulness. I, I meditate. Um, I have, I have outlets, you know, I have different outlets that I go, my, my go-tos of what, what it is, um, clear my mind, um, re, refill or re-energize, you know, um, a lot of the times is I really now, when we speaking of self-care, I really put that as my, one of my priorities when I start to feel I need, I need some care for myself. And what is care for me? What is self-care for me? What do I like to do to yeah, take care like of to myself? Do? I stay away from everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one, right? I shut down. I really, really shut down. And when you talk about disconnect, I do disconnect. I disconnect from everything. And honestly, I disconnect from the computer. I do not. I could have a whole weekend of not turning on the computer. Although, yes, I still have the phone to check the emails, to check whatever. I can look at it and check the emails, but I don't I don't do anything about it. I just look at it. And then I watch TV. I, I go through um, my favorite shows. I binge watch. You know, 90 Days Fiancé, uh, Desperate Housewives of whatever city it is. The things that interest me sometimes and that relaxes me. So I find things that will relax me. Um, I go to the gym and I exercise. One, that's one of the things that I think I would say is, is another outlet. Um, you know, so you practice mindfulness. Um, you exercise. Just establish a daily routine mm. and, and have boundaries. Yes, that's one thing, boundaries. And stay and make sure you're steadfast. Because if you're constantly giving out to everything in life, right? Showing up to your job or to a relationship, showing up to your kids, showing up to meetings, showing up to whatever it is. Well, if you're also constantly giving out, right? What do you do mm -hmm. to get back into yourself? And, and and for you as a mother, Gloria, so what do you do as a mother with kids and a family? How do you, outside of meditation, because, you know, some of you, I just can't meditate. My kids are just too loud. I got 10 kids. <laughs> what is like some tips that you tell your, your mommy friends to do when they're kind of in a rush, drop the kids off, pick the kids up, soccer practice, baseball practice, football practice, career and everything? What do you tell your mommy friends? When you find time for yourself and there is time for yourself. I don't care what people say. I, I've had people tell me that I don't have time. I, I don't have any time at all. I'm always, I'm constantly doing this, doing that 24 seven. Yes, you do have time. You will find time. You just, just think about it. There is always something for you to do. There's always some time for you, for yourself. Okay. So that would be it right there is find that time. What do you like to do? Let's say after you drop off the kids to their activities, after you drop them off to school, if you have just like an hour, 30 minutes for yourself, what do you do? What do you like to do? Once you have that, do it. You know, um, if you want to take a nap, take a nap. You know, don't, don't, it's not, our minds, uh, mothers, their minds are constantly moving. You know, after I drop off the kids, I got to do this. Oh, after I pick them up, then I got to drop them off to their activities. Um, <clears throat> as my kids have gotten older, I've became more where if there is a gap in between, um, time, like between, let's say their activities or, you know, before I pick them up that I use, I really use that time for myself and I could just be sitting in the car waiting while I'm waiting. I'm just relaxing. Sometimes I have, you know, I'm sitting there with the windows down and just staring outside. That for me is being mindful. And that time is for myself. Quiet. It's, so what, it's what you call, it's what you call disconnecting, right? Um, disconnecting. Sometimes I like to take naps, but when I find myself taking a lot of naps, that's because I know I'm burnt out. I know I'm tired. My mind and body is tired. Um, but 
it's just a constant, always on the go, 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 go. We don't realize that, you know, we you're not taking care of yourself anymore. You're so busy taking care of other people. But what about yourself? Mm-hmm. And that's why you have to start setting some, you have to start setting some kind of boundaries because God forbid anything happens to you and you become unhealthy. How are you going to take care of them? Like I tell myself that I don't want to get injured. I don't want to get sick. How am I going to take care of my kids if I get sick? Right. And then they're, yeah, exactly. And they're my, I've always told myself, and I know this in my heart, they're my number one priority. Mm-hmm. They are. So what I'm gathering is this. For women that are mommies, mommy friends, and, and anybody, you got to set boundaries. So that's another way to, to evaluate what phase you are is what boundaries do I have? And if I have these boundaries, are they being set? Like, are they being adequate? Are they being fulfilled? Because if you don't set boundaries, that's another phase where you can face burnout. Too many things, too many people are pointing you at too many different directions and there's not enough left for yourself. Because usually burnout happens where your needs not being met, you want to not being taken care of, and there's not enough left in the day or the week or the month for you, right? That may sound selfish and, well, I got a lot of responsibilities. Well, great. Everybody has responsibilities. Mm-hmm. But what boundaries need to be set? Now, if you're in a phase where you don't feel like you're burned out, this is not for you. But if you're in a phase where you're, you're, you're facing certain uh, micro burnout steps, it's best to evaluate what boundaries need to be set. So I want to say thank you for all the listeners out there. And thank you for your support. And thank you for downloading and telling your friends and everybody else. Um, this is another way to overcome. First, identify where it is and another way to overcome it. And identify the fact you have all the power with inside yourself to overcome that if you're willing to do something different. If not willing to do something different, then you keep facing that phase. You know, get to the point where you have to make a radical change. I mean, to the point where you're just, I can't do it. There's a story as I'm hearing people, they're so frustrated with their job. They go to work and they sit in their car and they just can't get out the car to go to work and they just leave and they quit. You know, our stories, people just send an email and just quit because they can't take it anymore. So this point, ident- point identify your burnout burnout stages. It's important to identify how to overcome them. And thank you for listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. This is Ron Johnson, your health mental health coach and your ther- future therapist. Yes, and just keep in mind that you don't always have to do everything. You don't always have to. You are in control of your mind and body, physically and emotionally. And again, thank you for um, listening to another episode of Life's a Shuffle.